thing. So I'm, uh, I, don't, I totally don't even need this microphone because I'm actually really, really, really loud. Um, what we're going to talk about today is tagged PDFs. And although we're going to mention accessibility a little bit, um, this actually isn't an accessibility presentation. And the fact that the accessibility <laughs> logo appears on every single slide is just me spacing it out and using the same templates I always do. But um, our agenda is to talk about tagged PDFs, what they are, why we want them, and how to make them. Because once you find out what they are and why we want them, um, finding out that it's really, really, really easy to make them is going to be quite um, important, in my opinion. Um, we're going to talk about the current status of a project that we're actually going to be talking about, which is implementing the tag PDF support. Um, and then we're going to, demos are always subject to the demo effect. And what we would demo for you is totally screenshotable. So we have screenshots. We can provide demos upon request. And you fixed the crash. So we, we should be OK with that. But we just didn't see it as um, being absolutely, absolutely necessary. OK, so tag PDF, it's kind of like a PDF on steroids. It has a lot more stuff in it, a lot of meta information. Um, in particular, as you might have guessed from the name tagged PDF, it has tags, element tags. Very, very, very similar, and in some cases, exactly the same as you see in HTML. There are also IDs for every single element. There's alternative text if, if it's provided. Um, and there's also, I had to kind of Google to find out exactly what this means from the spec, replacement text for symbols. The spec makes it pretty flexible, but the first thing, or the one above it, um, alternative text for images and other things like that, those are like big phrases and, and descriptive. Whereas for symbols, um, Unicode characters, a single letter that's a graphic, those kind of things. So the replacement text is assumed, according to the spec, to be a single character. And that's what the difference is between those two things. OK, why we want them. And I told you I was going to talk a little tiny bit about accessibility. What's motivated our implementing um, tagged, P tagged PDFs is accessibility. Because there, there's a couple problems with events, as you guys may have noticed from our recent Friends of, Go Friends of Gnome campaign. Oh, hi, Karen. <laughs> You're late. <laughs> and so, somehow I've just been fired from the board. Um, from the Friends of Gnome campaign, it was just a big old, we need to make this stuff accessible. And part of that is, you know, I mean, we have zero accessibility right now. Part of it is for non-tagged PDFs, getting the minimal level of accessibility. And what that will give um, users who are blind is access at about the level of gedit. And as you know, gedit doesn't have things like headings and list items and stuff like that. It's just text. So having just text is better than having nothing at all. And we're not going to talk about that aspect of what we've been working on. But there is so much semantic um, and structural information in XML mark marked up, mark up, marked up <laughs> documents, like that something is a heading level one, or heading level two, or a table, and how many rows and columns are in that table. These are all things that as sighted, excuse my stuttering, as sighted users, we just look at and bam, you know, we know what's going on. If you're a user who is blind, your screen reader needs to present that in speech and in braille. And in order for that to happen, we need access to all this um, meta information. And we don't have it because Poplar has absolutely no support for tagged PDFs. And by the way, thanks again, Friends of Gnome. This is lots of awesome stuff related to this whole project is happening because of that campaign. Now, honestly, I could care less about some of these things. I am totally motivated by accessibility. But I think the rest of the community should really care about tagged PDFs for, because of the items on this slide. You know, we keep talking about, you know, I, I, are we still calling it GNOME OS? But we're talking about getting on tablets and smaller devices with smaller screens. And if we cannot reflow these documents on, you know, a little Android phone or a, a GNOME phone that looks like my Android phone, it, you know, the whole PDF experience is just going to suck on the mobile platform. So if we have tagged PDFs, we could really easily do reflow. My slide, excuse me. Oh, yeah. And the rest is the copy, paste, and export. 
if I select text from a, a beautifully marked up PDF, it would be really cool if I don't lose not just that formatting, but you know the fact that something is a heading, or the fact that something is a table. If I just get text, I might have to reformat it, or at that point I might just, you know, it might not be worth it. I can type fast. Okay, so, so there's some good news and some bad news. The good news is on the right. Um, if you use LibreOffice, it, and I'll show you a screenshot in a minute, it is like uber easy, it's like one step to export your document to tagged PDF. So that means if you care about accessibility, if you want the reflow, if you want the copy and paste, it's a single step. The bad news is like no one else supports this. Alex had done a bunch of research the other day about this and it's like, Abby Word, no. Google, I mean, it's literally, we're just like, no, no, no. It's, you know, it's kind of like Soup Nazi on Seinfeld. No tagged PDF for you. There is, um, and you know better than I do, some people are interested. Yeah, in fact, it's, for example, in the case of Google Docs, uh, the documents is funny because uh, although you can't export to a tagged PDF, you can export to a ODT and then use LibreOffice to uh, export to a tagged PDF. That means that Google Docs has all the uh, structure, all the information for that. I don't know if Google Docs has a plan to export to tagged PDF, but in the case of LaTeX, uh, there are a lot of interest of that because after all, for example, in the academics, um, they want to, pr I mean, it's in, it's in a lot of faculties, it's mandatory to have accessible, uh, accessibly complain uh, PDFs, so they need that. And they are really interested because they want uh, mathematics uh, being accessible, something that is not happening right now. Uh, in the case of every word, it also happens the same. You, when you save as a PDF, is there is not option to create a target PDF, but you can export to ODT and with LibreOffice create a target PDF. So then what I mean is that all the structure is there, so they are not using that. And then there are a lot of tools that create PDFs, but they don't have any option or any interest of, we don't know about interest. In fact, we have a list there of tools, but then uh, but then we could ask, add at the end, et cetera, because there are, this is what happens with other tools too. Yeah, it was kind of funny. Um, I said, you know, Alex, can you get us this list of all the tools? And it's kind of like, okay, all these are no. May I stop now? <laughs> It's like, yeah, you can stop. So there may be other tools out there that do have this support, but we, we found one that has perfect quick support and we found a whole bunch that don't and then Alex got tired. Okay, I'm hoping, oh, you can never get like an entire dialogue and big enough, but I'm hoping you can see the one little thing that's checked that says tagged PDF. And so basically all you have to do with LibreOffice, and this is for writer and calc and, and um, impress and presumably the others. You just have to choose um, export to PDF from the file menu. Dialog pops up, check tag PDF. Now, so I want to point out is that right above that checkbox, there's PDF slash A1A. All standards need to have lots and lots of letters and numbers in them. I don't know why. That is actually, you know, we, we said that a tagged PDF is kind of like PDF on steroids. Well, this PDF A1A is kind of like tagged PDF on steroids. And what it gives you, or excuse me, the objective is for searching and quote unquote repurposing document content. And it includes, and I don't understand this in standards at all, I would think that B would include A rather than A including B, but for some reason the 1A includes 1B. And that, like I put on the slide, it's, it's about document appearance. And we're going to come back to that point in a minute. Um, structure and hierarchy, you know, are there child objects? You know, what are the parent objects? You know, what, it, it's actually a tree. Um, tagged PDF, which we've already talked about. Unicode character maps, to be perfectly frank, I need to go read the big, 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 thick standard to know exactly what that means and what is expected. And language specification, just what language is something. So in terms of the current status of the work that's been done, um, Poplar right now, some of it's in master, some of it's in a branch, but right now the entire document structure of tagged PDFs has been implemented for Poplar. We're exposing all of this information through Poplar Glib. Oh, and there's some, uh, those of you who are like Poplar geeks, there's all these different tools to um, examine documents and information about the authors and all of that stuff. 
And um, those tools have been modified to expose this information so that you can um, verify that the tagged PDF is coming out the way you expect in Poplar. Okay, um, we have not yet gotten to doing anything with this in events. That's gonna be the next main step. And I put in parentheses, you know, then doing this for accessibility because again, this is, this is what motivated all of this work. It's not what's awesome about all of this work, but it's what motivated it. And we can't, of course, expose what is not in events to assistive technologies, but that's the next priority um, after events. In terms of all the support that we've done, the reason I put a question mark by the um, 1B part, the 1B part of the standard is because as you'll see in the, the fake demo screenshot bits, we're already totally now able and exposing um, or preserving rather the formatting. So whether or not we've done every last aspect of the standard, I couldn't tell you. I, again, I would have to read that standard very carefully. Um, but at least functionally, I believe that we have all that implemented. Tag PDF again is already done. We're already exposing the hierarchy since I'm not entirely sure what the official definition and spec requirements are for Unicode character maps, I couldn't tell you. And we, bless you. And we are already um, exposing these, the language if there is a language associated with an element. So I kind of already said this, but again, our next steps are to do the event side work, expose that to assistive technologies, and figure out exactly what the status is with the standards. The last thing on there, this is I think gonna be one of those patches welcome. Um, some people just, I, I personally love LibreOffice. Some people don't because it's this big, giant, and at times slow creature. Um, there is nothing, we don't have time or the expertise or quite frankly the motivation to add export um, support in all of the tools that are currently no, 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 no. But if you saw your favorite tool on there, um, I bet the community would welcome a patch. And in relation with the previous slide about um, about exporting the to using uh, tagged PDFs, uh, this is something like the egg and the chicken problem. Uh, when we were I, when we were talking about that several months ago with Evans Maintainer, he said that one of the reasons they were not uh, priorities prioritizing uh, having target uh, PDFs, so reading target PDFs, is because most of the tools were not creating them. And in the same, in the same way, uh, tools that create PDFs were not really, really worried about creating target PDFs because the PDF re uh, readers were not able to read uh, that support. So. Uh, well, I, well, I want to. The other reason um, that Carlos mentioned is that it's like. He said, nobody knows what a tagged PDF is. And that was one of the things that motivated me, you know, telling you what it, you know, why you should want to make tagged PDFs. But I would kind of argue that even if all you guys start making tagged PDFs, that there is actually still a lot of usage going out there because the legal requirements, for, you know, if you are legally bound to have all of your documents accessible, you're, you already know about tagged PDFs and you are already producing them. So even if no one else is making tag PDFs, governments, um, educational institutions, and other big people who could be sued for um, not providing documents that are accessible, they're already doing the tag PDF. Carlos didn't know that. Okay, and now going to the point of this slide that is getting the code. This is funny because now is the moment that we talk about what is the work that we have done, but the truth is that we didn't do that, that work. So we would like to thank uh, Adrian Perez. Adrian Perez, uh, he, he did that work because he already had a lot of experience uh, doing document parsing. I mean, we are calling that him document parsing extraordinary. So as that part was not at all related to SSBT, we thought that it was uh, a, a perfect task for him. And we also, uh, the other work was made by Carlos Garcia, that is the maintainer of Popular and Beans, and he was uh, reviewing all the code. So, thank you very much. So, and if someone is interested about the code, it's right now at the Popular uh, repository. Right now, it's at, it's at a branch, and in, in also in some patches and some bugs, 
uh, in fact, some of the bugs were um, uh, created this week, where, where we were preparing the, the demonstration because we were uh, using the tools. Uh, in fact, the first bug is about providing the tools with the support of the uh, of the target PDF, and the other is a, a little bug about a, a missing uh, a missed uh, tag. And um, right now, during the previous weeks, Carlos Garcia was reviewing all the code, so some of the patches on that th on that branch is already on master and is going is in on reviewing mode. And we are, we are the that slide. I mean, we already know that uh, measuring uh, how a task, how complex is a task on uh, lines of code is somewhat silly. But we want to, we added that that uh, slide because we wanted to um, give uh, expose the idea to that is not a trivial task. And in fact, that is almost as much work as in popular code and the public relief, because this is also Im uh, important. Uh, as we are, as we added the support on public code, that means that eventually some other uh, free uh, communities, free software communities like Qt, could take this work and doing the same. So we are, this is another example of collaboration with other free software communities. Um, well, as you is what I'm saying. I mean, it's not really important how much lines, but I mean, th more than 2,000 lines on public, 3,000 3, lines on public really means that it's not trivial uh, work done at this, this moment. So, as in, in, in the advertisements, what we have before, what we have after. So, before we have uh, a tool called PDF info that just print some info about the PDF, the author, etc. And then we have some tools that created, based on the PDF, they created, they started the text, but was plain text without structure. And then we have another uh, tool that created an HTML. In fact, this is one of the reasons we added, we mentioned that tool is because now and then on the Oracle list, some people uh, ask, I would like to create a PDF, but I can't do that with the beans, blah, blah, blah. What is one of the options? And in several cases, uh, the people recommend to use PDF to HTML to take the PDF and create HTML. But the problem with that is that you get a PDF without not sorry, you get a HTML without not a structure. And this is the sample. At, you, at the at your left, you can see the, the original PDF with headings and all that stuff, and at the right, the HTML that you got before the tag PDF work. And it's more or less the same, but without not uh, formatting at all. I mean, OK, you have the bold, but uh, in the HTML that you have, you, you don't have the information about the headings. And for example, if you if you use a table with with that tool, you, cr you have only the content of the table. With just just printed without any formatting, so you don't know if you are in the first cell or in the second row or on the second uh, on the second column. Well, this is exactly this is wh what I was saying. Also, also, uh, well, <laughs> I think that probably for you it could be really complex to read, but if you if you then take the PDF from when we publish this. You can see at, at the right that you have headings, but only text about them. So it's without any formatting at all. So after, as, as we were saying, we added the support. Uh, sorry, we added. Adrian and Carlos added the support of Tag PDF from Poplar. So they also updated the tools in order to use that support. So uh, Adrian created a tool called PDF HTML that is equivalent to the previous one, but it maintains the, the, the structure, the, the structure that the PDF contains. And he also added some, um, sorry, some new options to the PDF info in order to print the structure. And finally, uh, to add popular glib demo in order to display the hierarchy. So, hello. So we have the same example. 
at the left you have the PDF and on the right you have the HTML, but now it, it maintains the structure of a heading, sorry? Well, this is what I had alluded to before that if you remember before, the, all of the formatting was lost. Th th this gets back to that 1B standard that I need to read very carefully um, to see if we're not implementing any aspect of it. But this t time, the ex you know, like the italics um, and heading two got carried over. So there's an, like I said, there's an excellent chance the bulk of the 1B standard is now implemented as well. No, oh, no, it's, it's working. And this is a, a screenshot of uh, the tool. I mean, and in fact, here is easier to, to see that now we have a structure of the document because we have different blocks with this H1 means header, so we can see that it maintains the structure. But probably it's easier to see with uh, with the, the popular GLib demo and we we can see at the right part of the right screenshot we can see this structure using a a tribute that shows that you we have a, a uh, element that is a heading an element that is a paragraph an element that is a, another heading we can see a, a equivalent example with these items for, uh, that we maintain the the, the nested structure. In fact, it is what I'm saying. With the previous previous this work, the, what the tools were doing was just getting the text, uh, printing it, or printing and exposing it, but without maintaining the structure. And this is the case of the of the, a table that, as you can see, the HTML maintains the structure of the table. We have the columns, we have all the rows. And with the previous uh, tools, we only have the text. Here, here, hello. Here you can see the PDF info that is a terminal the terminal tool that it maintaining the different rows and headers from from the table. Um, I think that, as you can see, we are not doing a real-time demo because we are already experts on this kind of presentations and we know that that when you do that with hard made work it usually tends to crash so we we have the screenshots as I, as I see as I say you can in short we are going to publish this uh, slide so you you could review that in detail if you want so any question Hi. Uh, you said one of the benefits of uh, the tags was for reflow, and maybe I'm just like revealing my ignorance here. But um, I thought that one of the benefits of PDF was that it was always like print perfect, basically when you view it. So I was wondering like how the idea of reflow fits into like the typical PDF use case. Like, is it like a fallback mode, or is it like a? Yeah, I mean. This this is funny because when we were doing some research for that, when people were exactly saying the same on the forums, were saying were saying that PDF were not thought about that, that the idea of a PDF was maintaining a perfect view, but the truth is that in the end, it, you you want to see the document, uh, don't, no matters uh, what is the size of your screen. So in what I mean is is. Uh, for some documents, it's true that it doesn't make sense to the flow, but from some others, I mean, it will be really strange if you need to force yourself to make, uh, sorry, this room, etc., to, to in order to see that properly. And in fact, there are some doubts about how to do that, uh, how to properly tag that. Um, but the idea is having some something similar to what HTML has uh, right now. I mean, this in HTML it happens the same. You have the browser and as you move the the mobile phone, it's automatically reflowing. That does, I mean, I know that is, it's strange, as you say, because the original idea of the PDF was that, but we, we also need to take into account that this 
DAC PDFs, support was added uh, um, recently, let's say recently, we have here for some years, but they need, uh, in the same way that the original uh, purpose of the PDF was not, was, it was having something uh, more friendly than Postgres. But since then, it started to evolve to something else, something more, uh, how to, I don't know how to say that, more document friendly. Now, and I'm going to say something that, that might be totally not true, but my theory is if you have, um, say, a bulleted list or a table, and none of the, if the fact that that's an actual, you know, structural list or an actual structural table um, is not known, what, how, how is that text going to wrap? Is it going to manage to indent itself so it's not under the bullet on the second line or not? And if it's just, you know, where, I mean, I think list items are going to be the, the, the biggest use case. But am I echoing? Um, but, you know, tape, ta I'm sorry. You, you know what? I am really, really light sensitive, which is why I wear sunglasses. Sorry. And I just lost my train of thought. No, it's not your fault. But. Okay. I don't know if we are really answer your question or... I guess, yeah, I, I kind of see what, what you're getting yeah, at. I, I think the bullet case is the biggest one. Oh, sorry. I, just to repeat myself, I think the bullet instance is the biggest one because, in, yeah, we didn't actually put these on the screen. But before we did the tagged PDF support, the bullet character is strictly a character, just like any, you know, an A, a B, a C, or whatever. And wrapping that text will work. But if we don't treat it as an actual list item, the indentation is going to be screwed up and it's going to look ugly. Uh, I have another question too, actually. Um, so uh, you showed a list of, of tools that um, can output tag PDFs uh, earlier in your presentation. Getting there. Uh, I was wondering if you also looked at um, other consumers of PDF that support tag PDFs and what's the support like for a, so like Adobe Reader probably supports tag PDF, but also like P does PDF.js support tag PDF? Because I assume that'll also sort of drive adoption to some extent. Uh, would you read your question? Because I think that we didn't get it. <laughs> so uh, those tools are tools that make PDFs yeah. and support tag PDF. What tools that read PDFs support type? PDF? Ah, which ones? Okay, we, the, we yeah, the th in, in the Linux world, in in the free world, in the free software world, events will be the first one that will support that, because okay, we didn't list that because this is a free software event, so you know we should t talk about us first, but uh, in in the rest of the world, so. Uh, windows and all that stuff. Uh, Acrobat Reader and Acrobat, Acrobat Writer is the, the winning horse. Um, for example, uh, Microsoft Word uh, support uh, uh, export to target PDF. Uh, at first, uh, was a, something that provided Adobe. Uh, is, uh, is, that, is that how I pronounce Adobe? Adobe, yeah. Sorry. So Adobe provided a plugin or something like that to uh, to make this Word to PDF, and now Microsoft Word is already doing that. So, and in fact, in a lot of uh, government pages talking about uh, how your PDF should be, so should be accessible, they say please use a Acrobat Writer to be sure that is target and make sure that using a Acrobat writer with a screen reader that it f it's worth fine. And with the rest of the tools, more or less, it happens more or less the same. The same that means that they, they don't support tag PDF. In fact, for example, one of the samples is uh, this PDF Studio. The PDF Studio is also work for Windows. And Google Docs as is a web service it happens the same. I mean, it's, it's, as I said, it's a sport to PDF, but it's not target. So 
once we f uh, once this work with Evans finish, uh, will mean that at the free software community we will have one tool that properly is port to target PDF that is LibreOffice and one tool that is Evans that properly read target PDFs. That will be more or less the same situation that in Windows that is Adobe Writer and Adobe uh, Reader. But the difference in terms of Windows is that Windows has had um, the ability with its screen readers to provide access to tagged PDFs. I'm starting to lose track, but um, over a decade now. And uh, you know, I know this is an accessibility talk, but again, that that's I can't separate myself from accessibility. It's really embarrassing when people on the Orca list say, you know. I can use Orca with Firefox and LibreOffice and do all of this stuff. And people say, well, what do you do to read PDFs? And some people say, you know, do the PDF to HTML, but you lose all the heading information. But what a lot of people say is, I boot into Windows and I use JAWS. So we're, solved, we're, we're, we're actually, by not having tag PDF support, we're actually sending people off to use non-free software. And now we're solving this problem. OK, uh, any other question? Oh, uh, sorry, uh, we already answered your question? Yeah. Okay, thank you. What do you think the next most important thing is um, to improve accessibility in GNOME? In GNOME, not, not related with PDF. Um, oh. we gotta solve the problem, we'll have yeah, exactly. And the next is something that, uh, in fact, doing all the presentations that I have on, on this WADEC, I was not able to go to a lot of presentations, but one of uh, two of the presentations that I was able to go was Wayland. Because the next thing for the, the next challenge for the uh, accessibility team will be the Wayland support. Uh, right now, it is PI2 uh, works with X. In fact, has dependencies with X. So the next big task will be uh, getting sure that all other stuff works with Wayland. Uh, in fact, we are, uh, the activity team is somewhat behind the other teams uh, because, uh, as far as I know, uh, the plan from Genome Cell people is uh, creating a some kind of a experimental branch with the Wayland support. So that means that with that, if you use that branch, you can test, probably is crash prone or something like that, I don't know, or that it means some features, but I, at least they they will provide to the users a way to test Genome Cell on Wayland. And we don't have that on SPI. So this is the next thing. Yes, okay, thank you. Uh, more question? Sunflower bronies. Sure. There's sunflower bronies. Yeah. Hi. So, I just, I mean, I no idea, not an aspirin PDF at all. So, just wondering if it's, this is related it, uh, to something like PDF annotations, if it could be used to something similar, or if it's a completely unrelated thing. So, yeah, I think that there are different stuff, and I think, in fact, I think that events already support annotations. Sorry? Well, I, I, we support it a little bit, but there was a Google Summer of Code um, project that sounds like it might not continue um, to do some work on that, and there's been a lot of discussion around um, making, I, I don't know the specifics, but uh, around making annotations um, way more cool. So it sounds like there, that we have a little support for it, but we need a whole lot more. But in terms of, since I've already turned this talk into an accessibility talk now, um, annotations, to my knowledge, has nothing to do with tagged PDFs. In terms of accessibility, after the annotations get implemented, we're gonna probably have to do a similar accessibility implementation. Okay, thank you. So I think that nobody, uh, thank you for being here. Thank you for the questions and see you around.